I'm Nan Simonson. I am doing an ode to Dan Buettner and his Blue Zones. The Blue Zones were first identified in this book by Dan after nine years of study and the um, backing of National Geographic's to find the five areas or the the five areas in the world with the longest living people, the centenarians, 100 years and over, who are healthy and vibrant, and he identified five of them. They are Icaria, Greece, Sardinia, Italy, Okinawa, Japan, the Nicoya Peninsula of um, Costa Rica, and the Loma Linda community of Adventists, um, here in California, 15 minutes from my house. He just released this book. Today is the 20th of December. This was released last week. It was an instant um, bestseller, Blue Zones Challenge. He's challenging all of us to create the environment of Blue Zones in our own home where we find that by doing that, the healthy choice becomes the easy choice, the logical choice, the ingrained choice. And in my Aging Powerfully with Nan Facebook Ager or Power Agers group, I'm challenging people, and I did myself to four weeks with his challenge, and it is going to be a game changer for people who think they can't live without so much of what we are living with that's making us sick. Sicker, heavier, dying earlier than ever before, and our kids are coming down with type 2 diabetes that never happened before. It's the diet, it's the lifestyle, he's helping us. So, why am I bringing that up? Because in that Blue Zones Challenge book and in his cookbook, the Blue Zones Cookbook, it's not even called Blue Zones Cookbook, it's called, I'll show you what I just made, I just made this. That's the um, Icarian, uh, or the, yeah, the Icarian um, longevity stew, and there's a video on that as well. Um, the cookbook is the Blue Zones Kitchen, that's what it's called. And I love the recipes, I love to read it, I love to, he, he so admires the lifestyle of these people who are living healthy, into their later years, years that here we think is old age. Let me get started. So I'm doing a big batch Adventist vegetable soup. On my other burner, I have the Icarian um, longevity stew. When I cook and I mess up, you should see this kitchen. <laughs> I cook and I mess up. Now, I don't use oil. That's where Dan and I part ways. He believes that the oil helps make people have healthy. I think they're healthy in spite of that amount of oil. Um, oil is processed, our omega-6s, and we're way out of balance with our essential fatty acids, the omega-3s, the omega-6s. The omega-6s will overpower the 3s. The 3s are anti-inflammatory. The 6s are inflammatory, and we get far too many in our processed foods. Almost any processed food you pick up is going to be loaded with oil. Those are processed oils. I eat whole food, plant-based. The Blue Zones people eat whole food, plant-based. They didn't even use oil until that processed product came to them, except for the cold pressed, which was the naturally pressed olive oil. But you can't cook at high heat with olive oil, even though it's in the recipes that way. It starts breaking down at 375. So a little bit on the top of a soup just before it's eaten, fine, but I'd rather eat olives than have olive oil. Um, okay, so I need to get this started. I have in this empty pot, not the three, four, six tablespoons of oil that is in a lot of these recipes. Do yourself a favor and try what I'm showing you. I'm showing you the ability to saute what we call dry, dry saute. That means I get things started to deglaze the pan using broth. 
I, with the alliums, meaning the onions, even celery, even carrot to a degree, I can create a kind of a caramelization. And I'm starting it with these leeks. The recipe actually called for um, shallots. I didn't have shallots. Leeks is another kind of an allium. If I didn't have that, I could have used a white globe um, onion. I could have used a red onion. I could have used green onions. I could have used shallots, little teeny guys. So I can see that the pan is already starting to brown lightly, that the shell, the, um, the leeks are starting to brown lightly. I'm going to put a little bit of broth. Can you hear that? Now what's happening is that it's deglazing that tiny bit of brown in the pot. I don't want black. I want brown. And now it's softening it. It's becoming translucent. It's softening it. I am getting as much flavor, if not more, than if I had poured in a quarter of a cup of oil, none of which we need. We get the antioxidants we need from our food. All right. I'm going to then put in as an accompaniment with this, something that the French call a mirepoix, and that is you have your onion, you have your carrot, you have your celery. This is a really classic kind of a vegetable soup. Now I'm going to stir this for a while and let it come to um, a place where I'm getting some, some um, caramelization of the vegetables. What do I have in here? Carrot, celery, and onion. I'm going to then throw in some garlic. I'm going to then throw in some red bell pepper. I'm going to then throw in some potato, etc., etc. I'll be back to you, but I'm going to let this cook just a few minutes. Okay, I'm back. So, this has been cooking for a few minutes, and it's beautifully combined. You can see that the leek is translucent, the celery and the carrot have softened. I'm going to put in a combination of additional vegetables. I have red diced red bell pepper. Now, I'm following his recipe rather closely. Um, he didn't have garlic in it. I'm not sure why. I always put garlic with onion in. Uh, garlic is an antibiotic type um, herb. Well, actually, vegetable. Let me see. It's a bulb. That's a vegetable. Um, if you put garlic in too early and the pan's very hot and it sticks to the pan, it will burn and brown and it will become um, bitter. So you don't do that. I have chopped potatoes, just a white potato with purple skin. Um, later on, this isn't part of the recipe, but if you're doing a vegetable soup, put in what you've got. Put in what you have in the kitchen. I'm going to throw in some zucchini near the very end and probably scoop out as much of that as I can for tonight's dinner because I like the texture of it in that way. I'm putting in something that the French call bouquet garni. The recipe calls for some sprigs of fresh thyme, some sprigs of fresh margarine, or actually oregano, which is a form of margarine. I don't know that many people that have that. I do because I grow that. I grow a lot of herbs. And I have my little um, can here with my with the string on it. Most people don't have that. I spent a lifetime of loving to cook, but I do. Now, what if you don't? Use dry oregano, use dry thyme, about a teaspoon of each. Um, if you like a milder soup without too much of an herby flavor, then you may want to use three quarters of a teaspoon, a half of a teaspoon. I'm going to add another ingredient that he called for. He called for a handful. What's a handful? Oh gosh, I'm going with far more than a handful of um, lentils. And this happens to be the brown French lentils. I'm going to put in a lot 
because I want this to be a vegetable soup. I want this to be a lentil soup with vegetables rather than a vegetable soup with some lentils. And I like my soup very brothy. He calls for 12 cups of broth. This broth is what, there's some bits of um, garlic in there that hit the counter when I put it in on my last soup and I just put it into the broth. Okay, ooh, nice. So that was four cups, that was eight cups. I'm gonna add another four. This is a quart bottle. So this is going to be a soupy soup, but these lentils are gonna explode. And I'll show it to you when I'm done. I'm gonna give it about 40 minutes. 40, 45 minutes, I'll get you back on and we'll look at what is happening. Now, you may not see what's going to happen at the very end, and I think this is fascinating. I usually use citrus or an acid like balsamic vinegar on bean soups, grains, mainly beans, uh, and a lot of soups. Um, this Um, this recipe called for either an orange or a tangerine. Isn't that interesting? First, to um, zest it. Get yourself a zester if you can. There are smaller ones, there are larger ones. I like this one, where when I run this, this is a blood orange, isn't that interesting? Because that's a real red kind of a juice. When I run this along this plane, I'm going to have the very finest uh, layer come off here rather than the white pith that can be a bit bitter. I'm going to have pure, well, orange flavor and then I'm going to use juice as well. That is going to be interesting. As I said, I'm going to put some of the zucchini in and then he called for something many of you don't have and you don't even want, but I happen to have it because I'll, I keep things around to use for recipes mainly. And that is, he called for white wine, wine, a splash of, what is that, a splash of? I could call that a quarter cup, I could call that a half cup of white wine or rosé or bourbon. Well, I happen to have some bourbon and I'm going to splash it in. Now, you don't get alcohol when you cook with a, a, a alcohol, a, a, a spirit, a, you know, vodka, bourbon, scotch, um, so I'm going to throw this in and I just want to see what's going to happen here when I follow his recipe to the T. So we'll talk about that later. But the alcohol burns off so there's, there's none of that going on. I'm going to let this cook, cover it, bring it to a boil, let it cook, and I'll be back 